Okay, I think I'm live. Yes, I made it this time, first time round. I'm a little early. I think Finn is still finishing off. And hi, Carrie. Okay, somebody here. And you can hear me. And you can see my project. And like Karen was saying, earlier everything is backwards so if I move yeah it's just all a bit strange when you look at your screen it's a bit like working on a mirror and uh, so thanks for popping in thanks Carrie hi Karen <laughs> and stunning thank you well I had to do a lot of prep work because it's a big project um I was also going to do a brush like everybody else has been doing up in fact this is a brush that I made back in South Africa um, inspired by Finn and it has a whole lot of her products on it her brush is to um, acrylic sparks it's the nice shiny stuff and I had this giant brush it's inches it's as big as my hand and um, so I was going to do a similar thing and then while I was scratching through all my stash, I found this paint palette, which had belonged to a student of mine called Philip. Unfortunately, Philip has passed away. And when I moved from South Africa to Berlin, I kept it as a memento. And now I'm going to have it on my wall. Well, that's the plan. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Yui. I'm not sure. I'm terrible with pronouncing names. Um, if they're not English, I'm dyslexic at the best of time. I'm not even going to try and pronounce names. <laughs> Welcome. I thought after the trouble I had last week of going live, I've Karen very kindly held through everything. I'm new to YouTube. I'm I'm quite happy on Facebook, Facebook Live and me. Um, <laughs> hi, Olga. Um, Facebook Live and me, we're good. But YouTube, this is a whole new story. And um, so, yes, I, I have a YouTube channel for years, but I must admit I've ignored it until this time while we are um, in enforced lockdown. It's partial lockdown where we are in Germany, so it's not too bad. We can at least go out and exercise and walk the dog, and it's not too hectic. Hi from Norway. You know, I've just been in, in Finn's live and there were people from all over the world and it's just such fun. I'm thoroughly enjoying all of this. And um, so, yes, at least during this time, I'm using it to learn more about YouTube. I'm learning more how to uh, upload to YouTube. Um, Olga's been giving me hints and tips about what programs to use to edit Um videos that I've done. I've been uploading all my Facebook lives to YouTube. So I'm getting there. I'm getting there. YouTube is slowly becoming my being a bit alien and a bit scary up until now. But um so what I did do because as you can see I've got quite a quite a lot done already. Started with just gluing her stuff and then she painted it. But because my project's so big and I also have texture paste in the background that I needed to dry, I started this project this morning so what I did do is I did record what I had done so I've recorded the fact that I used the Wendy Vecchi embossing paste through some stencils by Antunis um, from Stamperia as well as I'm not sure who designed this one but this, this is also a rear sten stencil so you can see the way I'm holding it that these two stencils are really thick these are the mixed media stencils and then this stencil really, really soft and thin. And I love it for art journaling and things. And I took a chance because I really wanted the wording which says artist appropriates or um, paintings or drawings as a professional hobby, um, synonymous, uh, creator, designer, fine artist, and so on. So, and it had the brushes. So I very, very, very nearly did a art journal page for this live stream hop. And um, so I took a chance and put texture paste through this really thin stencil the trick is cleaning it you've got to be incredibly careful with cleaning these stencils because these thin ones will 
get damaged very, very easily. So that's the stencils that I've used in the background over there. And then my molds, I have used the mold stamperia. I've used this one. And these molds are really designed for putting clay into. I like to use the um, Troll Factory, which makes the cream resin pieces. This is the two minute resin. Um, the other one I have is called Amazing Resin, Casting Resin, and that comes up white. So you have the two different options. And um, what I do find because it's liquid, in fact, I've left it on here, it has leaked through onto my desk. So I've left it for next time because these are designed um, for, for working with clay, which obviously isn't liquid. Um, it's not a problem. So just to, if you do have leakage, it's the way these are created by being pressed. The plastic gets really thin and sometimes it breaks. So um, that's just that's how I've created some of the objects on here so you'll see on the photograph that I have on my Facebook page and you'll see in the um, in the video that I have already uploaded to my YouTube channel um, that some of my castings are white and my castings were were cream and that's just because I had used the two different types of molds so Welcome to today's project, which is going to be how I paint. I often get asked how I paint things because my work is often quite precise. And I'm going to show you previous projects so you can see where I'm going. This is one that I have done before. I'm also using midform castings and molds. Um, this is a Finnebe mold and um, Finn's paints. And I particularly like this color scheme and I've decided I'm going to do a few projects in this color scheme because I'm going to hang them all on one wall. This is another one that I have created. Um, and you see I've used a lot of the shimmers on this one. Um, the projects are all quite different within themselves and all different. Whoops. Um, here's another one. This was all snip art products mostly. Um, so I'm trying to do a collection of artworks that will work together as a set. So I'm going to do a similar sort of color scheme here. I'm going to start off with the background because if I mess any of my color onto my objects, it's easy to um, work on top of them. So I'm starting with Finn's. Um, the turquoise from the patina effect and because this is so thick I'm going to use oops it's really gone thick since I last used it I'm going to just spray some water in where's my water um, I do find these go quite thick quite quickly if you don't keep mixing them and I mean I literally I used these a week ago so I'm just gonna mix that up so, okie dokie, get that off the back of my bra. I'm just going to get it onto my finger so that I can work it off. Okay. I'm not reading the chat. <laughs> you have space on the wall. <laughs> well, I only have one wall left that has... Okay, so I'm going to work around... I just want to clip... The, the texture um, that I've got in my background that I built up my stencils. So I'm working with a dry brush to start with to pick up the color. And I'm going to go quite bright up against my brush and I'm going to fade it out in the background here. Okay. And yes, Olga lives 20 minutes away from me by train, public transport, 20 minutes by bicycle. She's really, so Olga could literally come and get some. And that's just too much. 
much in there. So nothing like a finger to fix things. So really just using a very dry brush to pick up all these background textures that I very carefully put earlier. And I totally cheated and used black spray paint for my black instead of gesso because I just prefer the smoothness of the um, of the of the spray paint okay so now i'm going to move down here i'm just checking that i'm still in screen are those from a stamperia mold no these are from an icing mold that i got from i think it was aliexpress um so i have made my own molds from the um uh, they're called children's DIY straws. And um, I did, using a silicone system, I did make my own molds of those, but they are much skinny, much smaller. These are quite bold and quite thick. So I'm trying to build a lot more blue up against my objects so I'm going quite boldly with my blue underneath um, because this is plastic it's not it's not taking on any color at all I should have perhaps so they're right I'm now going to make you dizzy and I'm going to spin this round because I need to be able to get into that side Maybe I need to put a bit more light on for you guys. I forgot. Is that a bit better? Or is that a bit of a glare? Um, okay, so I'm going to build hype from Cape Town. Light is okay. Thanks, Olga. So I'm um, dry brushing to pick up all my tech. I did sandpaper the plastic lightly um, so that the paint would stand so that it would have a little bit of tooth. Um, so it might pick up a little bit of the, but really what I'm looking to do is have it pick up my, um, the texture paste in the background and I'm trying to have more paste up against the brush because I wanted to pop the brush wood. So yeah I, Cindy was saying earlier she puts crackle paste on things and I and as an artist, I think it is crazy. We take perfectly brand new and make them look old. If our own personal stuff had to get old and revolting, we get quite upset. <laughs> so I think it's rather funny that as artists, we go out of our way to use the, all these different wonderful products that we have got to make things look old and rusted. I mean, rust on your car is a total no-no. When I was a student, I used to have a friend who had one of those, the original Beetle, and um, <laughs> he's telling Olga to come to my house and pack a few canvases. <laughs> yeah, at the moment, they're all just standing at the entrance to my studio, leaning up against the the wind actually because I don't actually know what to do with them all and then I decided I had an epiphany I decided I'm going to put them all up above the family doesn't know this yet they're hearing this for the first time while they listen to me talk to you guys but hey okay I think I've got a little bit of tech hiding underneath here oh no I don't want blue on there okay my light bulb just got some background color 
and this is getting background color. Okay, so now, now that I've got this, and I'm just going to pick it up and blur or off some of the sand or the, the grit is um, coming off my brush collecting. Okay, so now I have got that far. Where's my lid? I'm getting some water in here. Guys, you need to check these pests. They go hard quite quickly. With you see, I've been using it a lot, so there's a lot of air in there. And the more air there is in the paint, the more it's going to start to dry. So you need to check your pests. Keep, keep an eye on them. What I decided to do is I'm going to use some of Finn's matte waxes with a soft brush to also build up some of the color that I love matte waxes for exactly that because they will stick to any surface and they're a very similar color. Got it where I don't want it. Where's a wet wipe or piece of roller towel? Here we go. I'm just going to get it off the edge of that. Nothing like painting a line to um, make things, you know, you try and do it at speed because we only have an hour to get these projects going, started, finished. Um, so I'm really wanting this turquoisey color underneath here and in here a bit more. And I've got very little on my brush. This is the patina blue. Oh my word. Sorry, Sarah, but I I don't have Google Translate, um, so I can't check. Thank goodness for Google Translate because being South African, living in Germany, um, yes, my German is getting there, but I must say this lockdown is not helping because it means that I'm not out there practicing. I have one Beautiful neighbors in Rocker Flats, and I have a lady on the first floor who I normally go to every Thursday for a lesson. A lesson, I find something online that she helps me with. So I'm trying to create like a halo around my brush. Uh, and I'm using the matte waxes for that. Okay, time to spin it around again. I should have a turntable. I've got one of those. That would have made life a whole lot easier. Okay, here I go on this side, working underneath everything. Ah, oh, she translated. Nikki just opened my package. Okay, guys, the, the chat is moving quite fast, and it's quite hard to keep up with the chat and concentrate on what I'm supposed to be doing here. Okay, come back up here. This is not quite how I want it. Finger painting at its best. Um, it cuts times, unfortunately. Are you the only one with the problem? I'm not sure what that conversation is. Okay, so I'm now using the matte wax because it's sticking to my plastic background, whereas the texture paste, the patina texture paste, only stuck to the raised area, which is fine. Um, and I can see now at this side that I missed a bit over there. My father always used to say that to me when I was working on something. You missed a bit. And the trick with these waxes is you get it somewhere where you don't want it. You take it off straight away because they are permanent once dry. And believe me, I 
got it on my craft sheet the other day and it was quite a fight to actually get it off. I did get it off with some brush cleaner eventually, but it is, I was quite shocked because I hadn't really expected it to do that. Okay, so I'm using just a dry brush to scoot some paint underneath here. And so I'm trying to get like a turquoise happening. And I want it to fade out. Um, There we go. Right, we're in here. How am I doing for time? I've already done 18 minutes. Where does time go? Stop the clock. Okay. Right, so now I've got the turquoise, kind of how I want it. Work some on that side. Not that I can see what I'm doing. I need a bit more here up to these pipes. So that's why I opted to do my background first because then if I messed on my objects, it didn't really matter because I'm going to be coming over them with some browns and some other colors. So I'm just helping. This. So when I was designing my project, as I'm working around this curved area, I was looking at all the objects I had that would work together. So in my stencil background, there's this lovely curve. And um, so then I found these pipes that had the same curve. And I've got some mid-form casting sitting over here, which I will probably put on at the end. I decided I didn't want to spray over them because they're really such a color. And um, there's a small clock in the heart. <laughs> so there's, yes, so the, this is also from um, this mold. And then what I actually did is when I was molding this, uh, there's love over here on this heart that I just poured into that section and I've got that there you'll see that art and then this heart from the middle of those wings I only poured into there and I put that heart there so you'll notice that um, uh, you'll notice that I do a lot of repetition and it's something that I discussed in the video that's why I did a video earlier I'm going to put a little bit of the patina into my background. Um, when I do my designing, I like to do a little bit of, of repeat. Um, and Olga will be happy with this. I like to have um, preferably odd numbers like threes and fives um, rather than two of something because it's just more comfortable. And I like to repeat sh shapes and I like to repeat forms. So the thing that I discuss all the time, whether it's on my fine artwork or it's on the mixed media stuff, I like to have an underlying structure. So I have at the moment going on this particular project, I have the written work and these and Tuni's two stencils, which have a horizontal and vertical feel. And then I have the brush which of course has a horizontal and vertical feel and things go out at an angle so to repeat that I've got my crisscrosses of my cogs all going at the same goal so I like to have repetition it helps to lead your eye around and for that reason I've got lots of things sort of hidden all over this, like the hearts um, so I've got that heart, that heart, and there will be one somewhere else because there will be three. Oh, here, yeah, this car's heart. Um, I only have one cupcake, and that's a little 3D printed cupcake, which I've since molded. 
I have pink hair, those of you might not know, but I have pink hair because I lost my best friend to breast cancer seven years ago and it was her birthday today. And she was the cupcake queen. She had the most amazing business um, making cupcakes for people's birthdays and things. She she would um, she make things out of icing that looked real. She made a teacup for her mother for Mother's Day, the one that, year that was out of pure sugar. It looked like a Royal Dalton teacup that you could drink out of, but it was just sugar. It was quite amazing. What? One is an odd number. You can have one or something. I have one brush on this and I have one key and that's to go with the lock. So I like to have things that kind of tell a story. I'm just going to put a little bit of fussing too much and I've only got half an hour left. Now I've got 40 minutes. Okay, I need to start with the brown. So because the texture of Finn's um, paint is so thick, um, I used, this is a South African brand, it's Dala uh, Burnt Sienna, which is kind of close. You could also use Indian Red Oxide as a base to um, just get some color down. And I'm going to use a soft bristled brush and I'm going to start on pipes. And the nice thing is you don't have to cover absolutely everything. Because I did it black, there's no point in really covering everything. You can leave those textures to shine through and to be shadows. So you might have seen, after I did last week's YouTube hop, I had a cover left over from the prep work I had done. So I went on, on Facebook to do a Facebook Live with another cup and um, I have no idea where I'm going with the story can't remember because one's yakking to one's but nobody to help you something about why was I telling you about that I have no idea so I'll just go with my brown paint happy little brown pipes <laughs> Beautiful story with no ending because I can't remember where I'm going. Um, okay, I'm not going to make a rusty light bulb. I want to come back. Oh, yes. <laughs> I remembered. Shadows. So one of the things I did is I created a... Um, uh, and then I did... Because as I said to you, we I'm busy learning how to do this whole YouTube thing. So because for the, this YouTube, I don't have enough subscribers. Oh, yes, please subscribe. I don't have enough subscribers to be able to use my phone. I have to use a webcam, which I know Karen uses her webcam and it works for her. But um, I would much rather use my phone. I just feel it has a better um, better. Uh, it, it this isn't HD this um, little camera that I've got so I would rather be able to use my phone so please subscribe people give me thumbs up everybody's been saying apparently that's important excuse me I have no idea I'm you new YouTube um, so I digress at least I remember this time what I was chatting about um, so I did a whole video on putting the shadows onto my cover. And unfortunately, when it was live on Facebook, it was absolutely fine. But the minute it was saved, it's saved in the worst possible quality. It's barely watchable. But I can't re-shoot um, it because it was a Facebook Live. And I'm not going to make another cover just so that I could do shadows. So basically what I'm getting at is I, because it's already black, you can actually leave the shadows or the the where the textures are picking up the paint so much. You can actually leave those deep bits black. Um, so, yeah, so I'm just using paint at this stage, just normal acrylic paint. Um, 
it's cheaper than the it's cheaper than the uh, rust effect. I will come to the rust effect because it's um, and it goes on a lot easier when you have this amount of detail because the the texture in there really fine and. Um, So I find it easier to apply my base color just using acrylic. You can use any brand. I'm just using this because it's what I've got. And also when you are designing your project, if you have to use molded items, I started and I still have in my kit a whole lot of stuff that I have collected when my husband dismantles a computer or when get rid of something, my old printer I took apart and took bits out of um, computer parts are pretty fabulous for projects like this. Um, so don't be afraid. Don't feel like you have to use all the latest things that everybody's using. What color am I using now? I'm using burnt sienna. Um, it's just the closest color to kind of rust because I'm going to be using Finn's paint on top of it, which is slightly redder, so it's a nice contrast. Um, and these bristles, I want to pick up the bristles so that you can see the brush bristles, but um, this one that I did that I showed you at the beginning, so I'd have missed it. And it's one that I did back in South Africa. This was a brush that I accidentally left in some varnish and forgot about it. And it dried solid. And it was absolutely perfect to work on because it didn't move. It was completely solid. I'm just picking up all the details down here. Yes, garage sales are great to find things. Here and then we have vintage markets. I've picked up some lovely watch parts and clock parts at the vintage market together with Olga. Olga and me together are great fun at vintage markets. I've been known to find a top hat and wear it the whole way around the market. My collapsible top hat. Some of you have seen me in it, Kriya and Anya. Um, and, of course, Olga and a whole lot of others saw me in it at um, Frankfurt. I needed something so that people never met me before that I was arranging to meet would recognize me. And I was traveling only with hand luggage. And so I took that collab top hat. It's great fun. 30 minutes left. Thanks, Olga. Oh, you're awesome. I'm Olga's PA. She's my PA. Nothing like having best friend in the house. Olga is live. So it's half past 10 here in Berlin. And Olga is a night owl. So I leave my phone on silent because she can then message me whenever she feels like middle of the night. She's most active at ridiculous o'clock. I am not a night owl at all. I am the confused pigeon I always say I live in a household of night owls so Olga is going live at the 2 a.m Berlin time and she's quite happy with that that is her normal that is as I say Olga's best time to create I'm gonna spin this round again so I can see what I'm doing am I still in camera yes Yeah, no, I'm not a night owl. So when we moved to Berlin, my mom came with me, with us. So she lives here too. She's also a night owl. So my son is a night owl. My husband is a night owl. And then there's me. I call myself the pigeon. You know, there's that joke that's on that goes around. Some people are early birds. Some people are night owls. And then there's me that uh, confused pigeon that doesn't know <laughs> what's going on 
So I had a good six hours sleep. But I must say, with these days at the moment, um, my husband's working from home. My son's, of course, okay, well, it's school holidays here now. Um, and they're working online. Everybody's, there's no, like, routine. And that's when I realized what a routine person I was. Um, until, yeah, I didn't have one. So... Right, let's get that in there. I'm almost done with all these bits. Here's a crown I nearly forgot up here. This one's going to get, I think, a bit of gold. Right, so my base for my rust is almost done. Trying to get my brush underneath everything. Okay, let's get my light bulb going. Right, have I got my base on everything? I think so. Wiggle it just a little bit. Okay, so now I have to decide on my highlight. And me, my highlight side is never difficult. I always have my highlight coming from the right hand side of my picture to the shadow side on my. Left. So I am start adding some rust and things on the actual rust paste. And you'll see that it is quite a lot brighter than this burnt sienna that I'm using. And I see I missed a bit down there. I'm just going to get in there. Right. So now I have that everywhere. I'm to go. Yeah, the blue just helps to pop the brown out. So a bit of color theory as well. The, the brown that I'm using is kind of an orange brown. And let's hope that this hasn't dried as well. Um, oh, no, it's nice and wet. I just need a stiff brush for that. Um, so on the color spectrum, opposite to orange falls blue. And so you'll see as I start to add this, that it's quite, the rust is quite an orangey color. So the reddish orangey brown of the rust pops against the patina color that I've added. And I'm going to particularly rust on the right hand side leaving it darker on that side so it's intentional when i'm actually not that rust cares normal on your car doesn't give a damn where it turns up as i was telling you about a friend that had a a beetle in my student days and the had rusted so badly that if we went through puddles in winter you got soaking wet from below because basically the whole floor of his beetle had rusted away. So I do eventually remember my stories, what I was telling people, because that's why I don't like the <laughs> read the the chats because I get distracted and I might have been talking about something and then I, I'm like a squirrel, shing, go off in that direction, forget what I was doing and why. Okay, so I'm building my rust and putting my texture. So now I'm trying to, so there's a lovely thick texture to this rust of fins. And I'm trying to get some of it on in thick globs. Let's have a rusty heart. Rusty, crusty, stick, stick, stick. Okay, so got the rust happening quite nicely on there. Yeah, kids these days have no idea about these old cars that we used to have to these rust buckets. 
my mum had a rust bucket and all the windows used to mist up. That was before the days of air conditioning. It was always my job to clean the windscreen as she was driving so she could see where she was going. Kids these days have no clue. Right, rusting up my pipes. How much time? 38, I got 20 minutes. Oh, paint faster, paint faster. Paint faster, paint faster. Okay, rusting up my heart. Let's have a rusty cupcake. Let's have some rush down here. Uh, rusty wings. Rusty clock. Let's get some grit paste going around there. Rusty key. More rust here. Ah, that's gone so thick. The rust is pouring onto my background. Okay. Right. Ah, oh, where did that go? Come back. Come back. Lost a bit. Uh, I'll have to set out later. Okay. Rust going on this pipe. Rust on my key lock. Rust on this little thing. Rust on this side. And rust on this side. And rust along the top there. Rust on this side. Let's get some more rusty crust going down here. Oh, I like that. That filled up there a little bit. Really makes it look rusty. Rust going down here. Turn it round. Okay, so rust on this side of my wing because basically what I'm trying to do is give it the feeling like the sun is coming from that side and it will help a little bit more just now when I start with the waxes And then finally, I'm going to put on some acrylic sparks and maybe some beads. We'll have to just see about that. Okay, didn't get anything. Neglected, poor neglected piece. Okay. Right. I'm going to leave that round in there because I might come back to that one. Can't use that brush for anything at the moment. Right, rust paste yellow. Um, I'm going to just use the same brush that I did just now. The yellow rust paste doesn't have much grit in it at all. Stemple bar. Stemple bars in Wilmersdorf, yes. And then there's Mit Lieber. Um, I buy all my Stamperia stuff at Mit Lieber and Finnebe is supposed to be coming in June. Well, she is... Hopefully this corona nonsense will be gone. Finnebe is coming to Eba in June. So if any of you have missed all her other things because of this coronavirus, you can always come and join us here. So now I'm putting the yellow from the rust paste. Again, I'm kind of 
as I said, Rust is not picky about where it chooses to be, but I'm using it as a highlight end um, on the side, and I'm just dabbing it here and there and everywhere. Like gummy bears bouncing here and everywhere. I'm kind of all over the project. Normally when I'm doing this for myself, I'm a little bit slower and a little bit more methodical. But the squirrel in me is coming out today. Whoops, that's too much. Yes, Anna saying we're looking forward to you coming to Midleba in June. Can't wait. It's going to be gorgeous. And it's doing, I think there's four different projects, Saturday and Sunday. I could be wrong. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it, especially after this, something something fabulous to get going. I don't know if the color is picking up properly on the screen. I'm trying to see. Thanks for the compliments, guys. Hit the thumbs up. I learned from Anna. Please hit the thumbs up. I've got to learn about these algorithms. Um, um, I do this for fun. I do it because I enjoy it. Um, I'm now going to go into one of Finn's, I think I'm going to go with Bronze Age, or maybe I'll use the use green brocade. I'm going to use Bronze Age. And like Anna, her silver, my one I've also had for quite a while. I'm going to put the detail on the wings over there with my finger. And this is where I start to go again on one side. Um, maybe I will use some that's a bit brighter. Treasured, what is this called? Treasured brass. Whee! I love it. It picks up all the details. And I'm going to use my finger press quite hard to get in there to pick up that. And pick up there, pick up the key, pick up the wings. How am I doing for time? I've got 15 minutes. So now I'm building more on my highlight side and trying to just pick up the details. Okay. And you'll see I'm just sticking to the one side. I'm going to let it fade out on these wings. I want a little, not too much. That's too much. Okay, I'll have to come back and fix it. I'm trying to win. <laughs> no rush. No, no rush. Okay, so now, um, oh, I completely forgot about this rose down here. Let's, it's the only, it's the rose amongst the thorns. Somebody said one. This is one rose hidden sneakily underneath here. So that needs to get some highlight. My light bulb needs the highlight. This light bulb 
definitely needs that because what's a light bulb? So it's the artistic light bulb moment. Okay, so now I'm going to come down one side of everything. And just have a shiny mind. And try and keep it along the top and on that side and along the top and on that side. Pick up some of the details of this gorgeous thing. Ah, uh, no, I want to darken that. Let's go with some of the copper. The tubes come from molds. They do come from molds. I um, found them on uh, the icing mold. Um, they are AliExpress. Okay, so now I've got some of Finn's rich copper just to bring in another color. Pick up, pick up a few details on this side. And I've got one of Finn's art things here. One finger gold, gold finger. Um, I just touch. Try and um, am I still clear, guys? If nobody's saying. Yes, I said you can use children's straws. I have made molds from children's straws before. The next person is Nelly's Artistic Creations. Nelly, um, link is in my description underneath. So um, you'll be able to find her after me. And the last I want to do, oh, I've completely forgot about my actual brush. The body of my brush over there. Pick that up and pick that up. Stay still, don't go out of focus. Okay. Um, right, now I'm going to come with my sparks, which is the favorite bit, my favorite bit. I'm going to just wash this brush. completely forgot about the brush top. I'm going to actually use what's left on this finger and just pick up some of the details there. I've still got some of thin um, copper on there. Okay. Uh, what was I doing? I was washing my brush. Thanks, guys. Hi, Francis. Okay, so now my favorite bit, the sparks. This paint is just the best ever. So although I've already now created the highlights, this just really, its the, I'm using ginger sparks, ginger magic, and it really is magic. It catches the light in a way that no other paint does. And... So I'm going to keep it down this side again. Oh, have I not got my great big head in camera? No, thank goodness. And bring it down there. because it just adds another dimension to the spark. I'm being quite specific because when things are shiny, they catch the light in a line. So I'm intentionally putting a stripe of color there. And I'm 
going to put it on the wings just to them nice and shiny. But I normally try and draw your eye with the sparks down one side so that there's one side that is just a bit more shiny than the other. And I'm getting paint in there and down there and on here. And let's have some in the flower. And I think that's almost done. Still have seven minutes left. I can still play a little bit more, be a little bit more precise. Definitely want to bring some of that out. The sparks is just, well, it, it lives up to its name. It's delicious. Is what it says it is. Got a bit too much good there. Get some in underneath there. Maybe I'll highlight this whole side. Make a brighter area. There we go. A shinier bit. Perfect. And highlight on there. And highlight. It's a bit like a comic strip thing, but it works. And highlight on here. Highlight my cherry, highlight this gear, and I'm going to call it done. Good question all, we'll let you know not allow sparks to dry on your Tim Holtz glass media mat. Had to soak with water and scrape and scrape to remove it. <laughs> yes. These are, it's an acrylic paint and some of them dry with more intensity than others. <laughs> Olga, behave. <laughs> Your wicked humor is getting the better of you. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed that, guys. And that you've been following all the hops. So Nelly Artistic Creations is next. I have in the description below my video here. And um, perhaps Karen, can you in the chat so people can pick it up? I haven't made anybody uh, um assistant or whatever you call it i'm still learning how to do this yay thank you i'm glad you enjoyed that <laughs> oh good <laughs> you only know how to behave badly if you're going to do something do it well girl you do that well you anyway, know there's a little bit of detail in these guys that i need to pick up that's did in that one and let's see you see I, I cost this stuff. Somebody should take it away from me because now I'm getting carried away. The sparks, the ginger sparks. Can't this stuff, I think. Okay, now I'm going to turn it around so I can actually see what I'm doing to this poor brush. I don't know. Should I hold it up? Can you guys see? So it looks like the sun is shining from that side and not so much from that side. Okay, hang it on your wall. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, that's 
wrong part and my sparks because I need to see what I'm doing under here. There we go. Get my sparks going on this side. I didn't do too badly from the other side where I couldn't see what I was doing. I can get into this rose a little bit more and here's a gear holding up this pipe. I've had to prop things up. There's a um, three dimensional things going on here. Um, so I did a fair amount of propping up. Okie dokie. Oh, thanks, Karen. I love doing this. Yes, I'm going to have, I was inspired by Finn's wall in her studio when she did the studio tour to um, have a wall of my own art in the lounge because my studio space is only two meters by four meters and it's full. It is really full of stuff because in South Africa, I had studios. I had a fine art studio and I had a craft studio. And um, so, of course, when I moved here, I couldn't, there was, no, it's like trying to, between your children, you can't choose what you're going to leave behind and what you're going to bring with. So I just brought it all. And um, so I've squished it all into a two meter by four meter studio, which I've pinched some space off my lounge. Thank goodness for Ikea. Ikea is the way to go for storage. So that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to hold it up close again so that you get a chance to see it in detail. I know you've got empty walls, Olga, but I know you're also quite capable of making your own favorite, incredible, famous artworks. Okay, guys, hop off next to Nelly. Link is in link is in the bottom of my live. The hearts. <laughs> Cheers, guys. That was great. Thanks for coming. Thanks for all the love. Thanks for inviting me, Karen. And for Tiffany. I know she's not participating today, but this is her uh, her brainchild. It's not heavy, actually, because a lot of it is plastic. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. See you soon. Bye.